used in this video is brought to you by Nosler, maker of the most innovative, most accurate, and most effective bullets and ammunition in the industry. The Daniel Defense DD5 V3, otherwise known as the 16 inch 308 that Daniel Defense makes. Um, this is an AR-10. For those who don't know what an AR-10 is, an AR-10 essentially is an AR chambered in a 30 caliber round. So this is a 308 and this rifle also comes in 6.5 Creedmoor. So, I love AR-10s. I love AR-10s because they just hit so beautifully hard. Um, all right, so let's talk about this rifle. From back to front, of course you got your standard Daniel Defense furniture, probably one of the most unique pieces of furniture on the market. You can't go into a gun store. And honestly, all you really have to do is show a silhouette of this thing and you can automatically tell that it's a Daniel Defense rifle based on the stock and based on this grip. Personally, there are some Daniel Defense rifles that I love the furniture on and there are others that I'm like, mm, I probably would put something else on it. On this rifle, I think it fits perfect. I think the kind of expanded dimensions of this rifle suit the aesthetics of this furniture between the stock and this grip, A1. Um, another thing I love about the 308s or the AR-10s pattern rifles is just how beefy everything is. It's like you take an AR and you just make it a little bit bigger so that it feels substantial and then it just makes shooting feel so much more of an, an event instead of the little pew 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 that you get with the 223556. Now, I'll be honest with you, 308s, it's, you're gonna get beat up a little bit more than you would with a 223556. That said, this DD5 V3 is, is, has an intermediate gas system along with a tapered barrel. And of course you got this lightweight rail, this lightweight M lock rail, where it's positioned at nine, three, four o'clock and whatever the hell this is over here. <laughs> but the recoil is very smooth. I'm not gonna call it light. It's not, it's a 308. So you can only do so much from a physics perspective in order to mitigate that recoil. But this break up here does a damn, damn pretty good job of mitigating that recoil while also kind of almost acting like a flash hider, but also acting as a bit of a break in some sense. So whenever I'm shooting the gun, it's straight back, which makes it incredibly predictable. So it's like I said, it's not beating. You think of it like a, like a nice little shove. Like watch, if you just watch it, it's just like, it's not a push, but just like a quick shove that's just straight back and you know exactly how it's gonna come and you know when it's gonna happen. So you're able to barely brace for it and then still be able to stay on target without any issues. And, and when you have a 308 that hits this hard and this short of barrel, um, automatically your mind wants to go, I wanna make this a, a hard hitting, run and gun type style rifle or or, as I have it currently set up, um, I kind of thought about making this my hog hunting rifle. I've hunted hogs with 300 blackout, I've hunted them with 223, um, but I think ideally I'd want to hunt hogs with a 308. And I've always thought about, okay, what 308 setup would I have in order to hunt hogs? And I kind of, I'm flirting right now with making this my hog gun setup. So I'm running this Leupold Mark VI, one to six, which, I'm running a one to six because it is lighter. It doesn't give me a ton of magnification. So when I was actually getting this gun zeroed in at hundred yards, um, I was just outside of MOA. Um, but I think a lot of that is more so due to my limited magnification more so than the gun, because I do believe this gun is a sub MOA gun easily. If you give me more magnification, if I had a three to 18 on this thing, I'd stack holes on this with no problem. Um, but, because of the fact I'm running a rear bag and a bunch of other crap and the limitations on the magnification on this optic because I wanted to keep it lighter, the deviations and, you know, starts playing in, human error starts playing into all of that nonsense. So you kind of hit a fine line where you're not really sure what is it. Is it the gun or is it you? Most of the time, it's you. But that said, this isn't a light rifle per se. It isn't the lightest AR-10 that I've ever felt. However, I do think it is light enough to do what I want from a hunting standpoint if I were gonna have to deal with hogs. And I'm thinking putting a sling on this thing and basically carrying it around with a 25 round magazine and doing what I have to do. So as you can notice, my ability to kind of move with this thing, it doesn't feel cumbersome. Like I can come here, 
bring it up, give a target, and we're good to go, bring it up. See, there's no, no real issue in terms of maneuvering this rifle. Now, is it as maneuverable as F223556? Absolutely not. However, I will also say this. Before you finish watching this video, a word from our sponsor. Have you ever thought about making a living in the firearms industry? If you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute's online courses might just be a good fit for you. To find out more, visit sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767 today. Considering it's a 16 inch, it's a 16 inch barrel, I think this gun is perfectly set up also to be suppressed um, and become a great bench rest shooting type gun um, because it is a very solid weight. It's a solid weight and it's really balanced. The gun is really balanced from that perspective and having a balanced gun, as I've said many a times, does a great job of mitigating a lot of the perceived weight on a particular firearm. And right now, as you can see, I have a lot of stuff on this gun. I got this Magpul plastic bipod, I got the Surefire Scout light, and then I have this one to six Leupold Mark VI. So all of that adds weight. Then I have a 20 round, 25 round magazine um, and that adds weight to the gun in ways that normally people don't want. But these are all the things that I want on a gun, especially for instance, if I'm hunting hogs at night. I have flirted with the idea of getting the 12 inch barrel. They're not available. We'll have to see what happens when those come in. But I think if I were to throw a suppressor on this bad boy and run it on a bipod, I think I'd be able to get out there. And this gun not only makes for a pretty good hog gun, but also a recreational target gun. And what I mean by that is if I'm out there shooting targets at distances and I don't want to have to go with the slow pace of running a bolt action and I just want to get out there and just blaze away at targets between five, six, seven hundred yards, I think this gun is perfect for that, especially if you want to run a suppressor on it to mitigate a lot of that concussive force that you would normally get from a rifle. But then again, like I said, this brake does a really good job of mitigating that while at the same time keeping this rifle shooting flat. As you can see here, just, just run it run it <laughs> like, like I said it's not soft it's smooth <laughs> oh man you can't beat having the punch and the, and the hit of a 308 and an AR pattern rifle something that we're all pretty familiar with something that um, we all love and enjoy shooting and even going from like target to target from here like, it's not that hard. Um, but, but, like I said, I'm interested to see what the 12 inch version is like, if I can get my hands on it. But I also wanna talk about this trigger. So the trigger is the standard mil spec trigger. It's, it's not a super high speed, low drag trigger. It is a trigger that is just single stage. There you go right there, and then you get a really nice reset. And then you got a pretty crispy break. Like, as far as creep, that's a creep right there, if any at all. So, from that perspective, I think the combination in this setup right here, I think personally makes for a very, very legit hog hunting gun. And so, I think I'm gonna try to run with this bad boy from a hog hunting perspective. Like I said, I have a one to six, which I think gives me enough magnification at the distance that you normally would shoot hogs with. Um, but then if I actually wanna bump it down to a one power, I can still bump at a one power and do what it would have to do. And then because this Mark VI um, does have an illuminated reticle as well, I can also set this thing up to shoot in lower light situations if I really want to. So, God damn it, I love shooting this thing. I gotta say, man, just, it's, it's a, <laughs> there's just nothing like shooting a 308 in an AR pattern rifle. It's just, they're just, I don't know if you can beat it, especially one that runs. And that's the thing about AR, AR 10s. AR 10s are inherently more expensive than AR 15s. Um, but this Daniel Defense here, I mean, you immediately feel how solid and how much quality is involved in this particular gun. It doesn't, there's no flex, there's no movement. It's just solid. Just so solid. And it's, it's an absolute joy to shoot. I mean, look, I'm not running this thing like a typewriter. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah! <laughs> ah, see, I've never done that with a 223556. I've never run through a mag like that and felt the urge to that they girl. Toxic masculinity yell or grunt, whatever the hell I just did. Either way, this is a Daniel Defense DD5 V3. Um, I really look forward to seeing what this does and how this runs as my uh, hog gun. But nonetheless, yeah. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.